Come to order. All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the swearing in ceremony for our new judge, <coughs> Danielle Ramirez. This is a. Woo! This is a big day for this court. Yes, it is for the legal community and the community as a whole. And that's why we celebrate these. And it's also a big day for our, our newest judge, Danielle. So All right. welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna start off with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance from Naima Hayes. Naima. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God and our Lord, to our maker and our creator, eternal and all wise God, thou who rules and super rules our world, oh, yeah. thou who spoke, worlds start twirling, sun start shining, and the moon start glowing. Master, here we are, once more and again, before your throne of mercy and grace. We bow in humble submission, acknowledging our dependence on you. We come, Father, now in the presence of family, judicial dignitaries, as well as city, state, and national luminaries. We come to present our niece, Zach Jr.'s and Melvin's daughter. Judge elect Danielle, before your altar of grace and mercy, yes. to offer up a praise of thanksgiving, thanking you, especially for this auspicious providential honor of your choice in choosing such a sagacious young woman and seeing fit to appoint her and anoint her to such a prominent position. On this momentous and joyous occasion, we ask you to protect her from all evil, shield and shelter her in times of adversity. Safeguard her with your divine protection, oh, yeah. particularly amid these turbulent and terrible times. Let a season of judgment be dispensed by the guidance of the Holy Spirit we humbly ask you, Master, embrace Danielle with your abiding grace. Empower her with the authority and the insight of Israel's judge, Deborah. Let her court be saturated with the wisdom of King Solomon, permeated with the patience of Job. Of Job. But above all else, refresh and restore her with refinement and humility shaping her heart with empathy, controlled by the compassion of Christ. Oh, yeah. Master, let it be thy will that she possess an ear to hear from you 
and give her instructions. Allow her to represent you well. Speak to her and speak through her. Give her insight to dispense judgment that equals the circumstances without fear of confronting injustice and corruption. And Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we will give you all the honor and we will give you all the praise. For it is in his name that we pray and ask it all. In the name of he who died, but yet still lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. 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 I can see where our new judge gets her, gets her eloquence. <laughs> Pastor, it was beautiful. Thank you, sir. So now I, I, I want to welcome everybody. Everybody here, as far as I'm concerned, is a luminary. But I am going to uh, specify or introduce some people um, who have made it a, a point to get here and honor uh, Judge uh, Danielle. Um, and I don't know how many of you are here, but we're gonna, I'm going to list your names and we'll see. Uh, first of all, um, Supervisor of the First District from the Board of Supervisors, Miguel Villapudua. Uh, his Chief of Staff, Chris Roper. Not, uh, excuse my, uh, my mispronunciation. Uh, Supervisor of the Third District, Tom Patty. Uh, Mike Anderson, his Chief of Staff. Fong Zhe Keokong, um, our uh, Treasurer Tax Collector. Sheriff Pat Withrow, Captain Brian Barnes, Lieutenant Rudy Lovato, Rudy who takes, <coughs> who takes care of us and us judges, and Marine here, he, he takes his job very seriously. Thank you, LT. Captain Mel Hutzel of the California Highway Patrol, our public defender, Miriam Lyle. <laughs> District Attorney Elect, Ron Freitas. Are you with us, Ron? Thank you. Chris Woods, Director of uh, San Joaquin Human Services Agency. The Executive Director of the San Joaquin County Bar Association, Susan Bartman. <laughs> Olivia Hale, the Registrar of Voters. Registrar of Voters, if you're not here, I get it. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> that is very impressive. <laughs> uh, incoming Board President of the San Joaquin County Bar Association, Sean Geddes. You hear Sean? <laughs> Mr. Dennis, his middle name is Judge. <laughs> and he serves as a pro tem judge for the court, and he has for a long time, and we appreciate that. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> Daniela Green, um, Deputy City Attorney for the uh, City of Manteca. Are you here, Daniela? Mayor Kevin Lincoln. Woo! <laughs> Harry Black, City of Stockton City Manager. <laughs> Marcia Cunningham, the Director of General Services. Raymond Beckler, Chief of Lathrop Police Services. Are you here, Chief? Edward Martell, Chief of Montezuma Fire District. <laughs> I've been watching these for about 18 years now, and I have always laughed because my colleagues could never recognize our colleagues when it came to introducing the judges. So um, I guess they can laugh at me now. I'll never look down. Uh, first of all, I want to recognize um, our own uh, Judge Consuelo Callahan. Retired from the 3rd District Court of Appeal, former judge, presiding judge 
of this court, the Honorable William Murray. Right, not all your faces look the same. <laughs> we'll start in the back, in the upper, Judge Christine Eagle. Judge John Northup. Judge John Soldati. Retired judge, former presiding judge, Dave Warner. <laughs> former presiding judge, Linda Loftus. <laughs> She's the one that kind of got me into this. <laughs> My former uh, soccer coach, uh, co-soccer coach, actually he was the head guy. He went 20 and 0, didn't know anything about soccer. It's <laughs> the truth. <laughs> Retired Judge Les Holland. <laughs> Commissioner Tamim Mardini. <laughs> Judge Seth Hoyt. <laughs> Judge Tony Agbiani. <laughs> Judge Carter Holly. <laughs> and for the first time publicly, Judge Jonathan Fatari. <laughs> Michael Mulvihill. <laughs> Commissioner Mike Rasmussen. <laughs> Commissioner Cheryl McCann. <laughs> and sitting in the front row and manning the computer, and it's not because she's checking her fantasy football team. <laughs> she is actually on call tonight, so she has to get up and leave. It's not because she's rude. She's just very diligent. <laughs> The uh, court executive committee, the people that. What's her name? Oh, I'm sorry. That's a slip. Aaron Judge, Aaron Guy. I love it, one mistake. That was mine, right? The court executive committee in the back, Judge Lance Chico. Supervising. Civil Judge and Supervisor of Commissioners, Judge Jane Lee. <laughs> Supervising Criminal Judge, Lauren Thomason. <laughs> Former Presiding Judge, Jose Alva. <laughs> I'm sad to say, outgoing. Aww. Supervising Family Law Pillar of the Court. <laughs> responsible for this building in a lie, Judge Robin Apple. <laughs> and the executive presiding judge, Judge Gus Ferrer. <laughs> and sitting over here um, on the, uh, in the speaker's area, Judge Tony Lucadini. <laughs> You all know Danielle. <laughs> so at this point in time, we're going to have some speakers. Um, and I think the first uh, one of our uh, speakers is going to be uh, public defender, Miriam Lyle. Well, Thank you to everyone on behalf of Public Defender's Office. I am so honored to speak for Judge Danielle Dunham Ramirez. It is quite an honor. I know that that's a word that will be um, said many times today, but it's an honor. First of all, I've known you, it's hard to believe, for over almost 25 years. I know, neither one of us looks a day yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> so first in the Public Defender's Office, for your brief but mighty stay. Um, we learned how to dispo files, we learned how to cross-examine, how to go to trial, how to deal with sometimes difficult clients, sometimes difficult um, law enforcement officers, and really learned how to think on our feet, to put together a case, and to do the best zealous, ethical, and efficient job for our clients. I then, after you left the office, would see you, I called you my crosswalk, crosswalk friend because we would often see each other crossing, just yelling to each other, um, a few pleasantries, and then later, 
thanks to your love of your life now, Eric. I've gotten to know you even better. And I really appreciate your style. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your zealous um, advocacy for whomever you're representing. It doesn't matter the person's race or what language they speak or what their bank account is. You've always done the best for your clients. And I think that that's really important because now your role is changing, but it's really the same. To think about the Constitution, the statutes, the law, due process, and make the hard decisions no matter which way it leads. I have complete confidence in you, and it is a true honor. As you can see from all of the, the judges, the colleagues, your family members, the legal community, I'm not just the one that thinks that this is an honor, but everybody here. Um, I want to congratulate you and wish you mazel tov and look forward to many years of hearing about your experiences on the bench and congratulations. Executive, our CEO, Brandon Riley. Yeah. And our assistant CEO, Stephanie Bohr. Yeah. It's to fall apart without you, and we are lucky to have you both. All right, our next speaker is um, Judge Consuelo Kelly. Lastly, 
you also bring special skills to our court because of your many years in dependency court. You truly understand that our society can only be healthy if we take care of our children so that they can be successful members of society. In your journey to the bench, Danielle, you have experienced much life, some happy days, some sad, but all of those days will make you a better and wiser judge. Today is a happy day for you, for your family, and for our community. In my view, you are the quintessential phoenix that has risen from the ashes. You are an example and an inspiration to everyone that has experienced adversity. Your story proves that resilience and perseverance matter and that success is possible for everyone. A song, a song by Donnie McCurkin comes to mind. What do you do when you've done all you can? What do you do, what do you give when you've given all and it seems like you can't make it through? Well, you just stand. When there's nothing left to do, you just stand. All of your life, you just, you just, you stand. And I know you will do so going forward and take on the challenges of being a judge. Congratulations. We all stand with you today to support you as you begin this new chapter of your life. We all love you and we're here to support you. Speaker is another judge, Judge Anthony Lucchino. Why didn't you let me go before? <laughs> so unfair. Uh, it's an honor to be here with you today and to speak to my uh, experience with Danielle. I think of all the judges, I've had the uh, uh, longest tenure with uh, Danielle. She started in, when, back in the days, over 23 years ago in municipal court, and I was doing criminal law at that time. We did DUIs together, and I've, I've been the one that has had the burden, or excuse me, the pleasure <laughs> the throughout. And for the past 12 years, when I've switched to uh, dependency work, uh, Danielle and I have uh, worked together on literally hundreds of cases. And she is, uh, from day one, an incredibly unique individual. She has that infectious enthusiasm you can't repress. And I knew that the first day I met her. When she came in, she came prepared. She was honest. She was willing to do the work. She not only brought the files to court, she had read them. She had prepared them. <laughs> and she negotiated cases. And if needed, uh, she would take them to trial. She was not afraid of trial. She understood the laws of evidence and represented all of her clients to the highest possible standard. And I was immediately impressed by that. And uh, for the past 12 years, as I've said, we've, we've corroborated in an entirely different area of the law. And her being here today, I guess perhaps I get some of the credit. Or <laughs> <laughs> some of the blame, in that point of view. <laughs> But when, I, when we did hook up again in dependency, and for those of you that do not understand what dependency is, that is the area of law that deals with child neglect and child abuse. And unfortunately, uh, those issues are rampant uh, across our country and rampant here in our community. And it's a result of so many factors. These are uh, families that are at extremely high risk, that are struggling, that deal with issues of substance abuse, mental health, homelessness, uh, poverty, and they are before the court and they involve some of the most difficult cases. Uh, rarely do we see a simple case of, say, a dirty house. We see cases of abuse, physical, sexual, mental abuse, and we unfortunately even see cases involving the death of siblings. And it takes a strong, uh, Constitution to work in this area of law. And I'd like to recognize uh, the CPS workers that are here. Uh, they work tirelessly to deal with these cases. And the only time they are uh, mentioned, unfortunately, or often, 
is when there's a disaster, and disaster strikes this community on a regular basis, given the limited resources uh, that they uh, possess. Danielle, since we work together, has impressed me by absolute compassion, commitment to the well-being of these children. She uh, litigates the cases. Uh, after her tenure in Muni Court, I believe, uh, who's here? Ms. Mulgart recognized, there's Janine, recognized the talent, had her, uh, took her under her wing, and Danielle has become an expert in the area of uh, the uh, juvenile law. And I would also like to recognize the attorneys that practice juvenile law. It's not an area of law that you're going to get rich in. It's an area of law that you do because you have a calling, because you have a special empathy for these families. And we do the best we can in this county. We attempt to reunify families when we can. Uh, unfortunately, we're not always able to do that. We offer, we offer a myriad of services. We have a drug court that's one of the best in the country, I believe. And individuals that finish the programs are able <coughs> to reunify with their families. Unfortunately, there are those cases where you have to make a very difficult decision. You have to terminate the services of parents, meaning they will never have those children back in their lives. And it takes an individual with strong courage, that has discipline, that has a strong ethical background to make those decisions. Danielle has demonstrated that time and time again. It has been an honor to work with her. And I'm so happy that the governor has seen fit to make that uh, selection. It took a while, I know. <laughs> a little disappointed from time to time, but she had the strong support of her family, her mother, her son, long suffering Eric. <laughs> you can see by the individuals that are here the enthusiasm her family has for. Her. I was told there's even an uncle who RSVP'd six times. <laughs> so that is the support that's going to carry you through. Danielle, uh, I'm honored that you asked me to speak. I'm honored by your work. And I look forward to working with you for a short period of time. <laughs> <laughs> with Danielle, she told me she wanted to be a judge. My first reaction was, let's see, you have a great job working in the Human Services Court. You're well respected by the judges you work with, the colleagues. You do a great job. Why would you want to leave? <laughs> then we talked about the fact that when, not if, but when she was appointed to the bench, Judges can sometimes be very isolated socially. Appellate judges sometimes write some not so nice things about them. <laughs> and finally, you don't always get the assignment that you want. But the response that I got from Danielle speaks volumes of why we're here today. She had a calling, she had passion, and above all, she cares. She cares and she learned that from the people sitting right in this area of the room. She cares because she knows that she can make our community a better place in which to live. All judges that are here come with certain life experiences. Some they've learned through being an attorney and many they've learned through life. Danielle unfortunately has had tragedies and great accomplishments all rolled up in one. The tragedy of losing a child, being a single parent, working her way through law school, and taking on her commitment to continue to raise a family and continue to excel in the law is not an easy feat for many people. In dependency court, she didn't just work there, she supervised it. In the courts in which she served, she was distinguished by the judges that she worked with and the attorneys that she worked with. She learned many things in that part of her life 
that will hold her in very good stead as a judge. In dependency court, you learn about addiction issues, you learn about mental health, you learn about homelessness, you learn about many of the problems that plague our society today. And those are tools she takes with her to the bench that are unequaled and will bring a great benefit to the judges that she works with. Certainly, Danielle has many characteristics that the governor saw in appointing her and that everyone in this room has seen in different capacities. Some of her best characteristics are that she's a great listener. She obviously has that innate quality you can't teach someone, and that's called common sense. She certainly also is the first to say if she doesn't know something, she's going to go learn it. Now, with everything that she's accomplished in her life, she would have the, let's say, character of being prideful, but she's not. She's humble. Yeah. She's got humility. Yeah. She knows what her background is. She knows, obviously, what comes before her in court. And in family law court, I think she is so perfectly suited to that with everything that has occurred in her life. I've known Danielle for a number of years and we share some things that we won't talk about here today and some things that we will talk about. The one thing that I think that is most telling about her is how sincere and how real she is. She believes in the litigants that come before her deserve their day in court. They deserve to be heard. She is patient. She is kind but she'll let you know also who's in charge. <laughs> so this is what we're here today to do is to celebrate the culmination of a great legal career as an attorney and the beginning of a great career that she is gonna have on the bench. Danielle, I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of who you are and what you are and what you will be. Obviously, um, I also noticed that you haven't Right yet, which is something I was <laughs> didn't think we'd get to yet. <laughs> I would say finally that your faith, which is an important part of your life, your family, which is equally important, and your love of the law is what has brought you here today. And we want to say God bless you and thank you. support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of California and the Constitution of the state of California against all enemies against all enemies foreign and domestic foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of California and the Constitution of the state of California that I take this obligation freely that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will and that I well will, I will well I will well and faithfully, <laughs> and faithfully discharge the duties discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter upon which I am about to enter Congratulations. <laughs>
come here today. Um, thank you, Naima. Where's Nai? Where'd she go? Um, yeah. Thank you, Nai. Thank you for doing the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, um, Uncle BB. Where's Uncle B? Thank you, Uncle B, for the invitation. Thank you, Uncle B. Um, thank you to the speakers for saying such nice things about me. People like me. <laughs> <laughs> they really like me. Um, Judge Callahan, I, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know what you mean to me. You know what we've been through. And, and thank you for being here today. Thank you for taking out the time to be here. She has another engagement, so I, I understand if, if you leave. Um, thank you to Judge Lucchini. Um, Judge Lucchini just had knee surgery, and he's, he, you look good, kid. <laughs> he came out, so I appreciate you. Al, thank you. Al was one of the first persons, attorneys, who, who did, who encouraged me, who said, you, you should apply to be a judge. You'd be a great judge for all the, the reasons that he said. And it, it, it's taken a while, but, but I'm here. So thank you, Al, for for everything you've done to me, everything you meant to me. We, we, we both belong to the same club, unfortunately. We both lost our sons and we belong to the same club, but Al, Al thank you. Um, I would like to thank the Judicial Appointment Secretary, Luis Cespedes, for recommending my appointment to the bench, and I would like to thank the Governor, Governor Gavin Newsom, for appointing me to the bench. It is my goal to apply the law fairly and justly and afford those who appear for me, in front of me, an opportunity to be heard. And trust me, family law litigants want to be heard. <laughs> be heard and heard and heard. Um, I would like to recognize now retired Justice Murray. Justice Murray, thank you for being here today. I know you also have an engagement to go to, but you took the time out to be here, and that means so much to me. You supported me on my journey to the bench, and I, and I thank you very much. Um, Thank you to my new colleague, the bench. You guys have been so nice and just so supportive and, and, and so friendly, and I figured out why. Because family law is my assignment. <laughs> Commissioners McCann Chambers more than I more than I've been in mine. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your help. Thank you for for all of your advice. I appreciate you. Same with uh, Commissioner Mardini. Thank you for everything. Um, you've been so helpful. And to Judge Apple, thank you for trusting me to do this assignment. I am going to do a great job, and I thank you. Um, where's my clerk, Carol? Is Carol here? Carol, my clerk. She's amazing. I would like to thank Carol. I don't know if she's here. Carol makes me look good, she's, she's, she's on it, and I tell her every day that I, that I appreciate her. Judge Coughlin, our presiding judge, I would like to thank you. You have been so encouraging, you've been so supportive and accessible. I have called Judge Coughlin, I don't know how many times, and he always answers the phone. <laughs> I called him one time, I think he was in the middle of a softball tournament. They, they were losing, did you win? Our court executive officer, Brandon Riley, the, he, he makes us all, he runs the court, makes us look good, and his assistant, Stephanie Bohr. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you guys for, for being here. Where are the judicial secretaries at? I would like to thank all the judicial secretaries. I don't know if I saw Belinda running around here. Trissa, and to uh, Crystal, and Belinda, and Ruby, and to Lieutenant Rudy Lovato. Rudy, thank you. You came to see me the other day to make to tell me that everything is gonna be okay. It's gonna run smoothly. We don't have any active threats against you, no one's against you. <laughs> swearing in ceremonies like athletes watch the film. I, I look and I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna say. Um, I don't wanna be up here rambling, but I have so many people that I wanna thank that have been here and, and gone with me through this journey. And I wanna start with my parents. My, my father, Zacchaeus Dunham Jr., passed away earlier this year. Yep. 
He's no longer with us, but I know that Papa is here with me. Yes, all you yes. He always knew that I want to be a judge, and I know Papa would be proud of me. Yes, sir. My mom is here today. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, Mom. <laughs> My parents were very young when they had me. My mom said, when I told her I was going to say this, she said, you can't tell them how young I was. <laughs> and an exact quote, they don't need to know all that. <laughs> so my mom tells me that I have been talking and reading since the age of nine months. Yes, she made uh, me. She made me. She made me read cereal boxes. She made me read Dr. Seuss books. She made me read the sources. She made me read dictionaries. She said she wasn't going to have no dummies around her. <laughs> she wanted to make sure that I was articulate and smart and I love to read. And I thank you for that, Mom. My mom is one of the strongest and most resilient women I've known. She has been through so much oh, yeah. in her life. And she still maintains to have a positive attitude. Yes. She uplifts people. She encourages people. She prays for people. Yeah. Yeah. Even though she may not be having a good day. Yeah. She instilled in me the value of hard work and dedication. And she always taught me that I could be whatever I wanted to be, whoever I wanted to be. And she always taught me to never give up. She said, that's not an option. You don't give up. And so I thank you, Mom, for that. I thank you for your tough, and I mean tough love. <laughs> <laughs> Lightweight CPS tough. <laughs> 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 shape me and shape my values and my core and who I am is my grandmother, Mom. the matriarch of the Dunham family, mm -hmm. Mama Dunham. Mm -hmm. Mama Dunham. Mm -hmm. Mama Dunham passed away in 2020, but I know she's here with yes, me. Sir. Mama Dunham was a tough old bird. <laughs> she's a tough old bird, and she went through so many surgeries and so many yeah. illnesses yeah. and yeah. so yeah. many heartaches, and she still survived. And yes, she taught sir. me to never give up. No. The Dunham family, they're here. Hey. Yes. <laughs> been supportive of yes, me, sir. Yes, sir. and we just support each other. Yes. Hi, Dunham family. <laughs> Our family is from Stockton, but some of us have moved away. I want you to know I have family here. They came back for this investor's year. I have family from Alaska. Yes. Sir. I have family from Washington. Stefan and his wife. Yeah. I had a family from SoCal, Natasha, Seaside, Uncle Vivi, and T. Monica. Who else is here? Monte! I Monte. Hi, baby. Dominique. I have family from, is it Nevada or Nevada? Nevada. Dave and Kobe are here. My family. And, uh, and Judge Lucchini said this, was so excited for me, one of them, and I wasn't going to name them. <laughs> they called an RSVP, I thought it was five, but it's six, That's six times. Is. That's how excited they were to come to this investiture. They were not going to miss this investiture. Oh, no. And that's my family. They, they're they going to show up. And I thank you, and I love, and I love my family. I've always known since the age of eight that I wanted to be an attorney. I've always wow. wanted to help people. I've always had a desire to advocate for those who could not protect themselves, who could not advocate for, them, for themselves. And so I wanted to go to law school because I wanted to help people. And I did. I got married at the age of 19. I had my first son, Michael, at 25. And I started attending night school at Lincoln Law School yeah. while my first son was six months old. Yeah. My former spouse, David, is here today. Yes, sir. Hi, David. <laughs> Thank you, David, for always supporting me and encouraging me all these years. Yeah. You always knew that I would be a judge. 
But most of all, thank you for being a great father to our sons. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Is James Shiavenza here? Oh, I just told you I went to Lincoln Law School. And my torch professor is here. <laughs> James Shiavenza is also in law school, we remained friends for over the years, and I really thought I was doing great towards, and I thought I was going to am jury, but I didn't. But I think I did. I did okay. You were great. I was great. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, is Mark Lamb here? <coughs> Lammy! My, Mark Lamb is, we started law school together, we went to law school together, he's one of my closest friends, and we remained friends over the over the years. Attorney Mark Lamb, thank you for being here. Mark, thank, thank you. you. That means so much to me. As you heard, I was a public defender, and Janice Everett was my first supervisor. Is Janice here? Janice. Janice Everett. Janice taught me trial skills. She taught me always to be prepared. She taught me to be on time to court. And I also learned, while I was at the public defender's office, how to handle large calendars. And I think that is a skill that serves me well now the ability to handle large calendars and move calendars along. I also gained experience in, like Miriam said, representing, um, shall I say, challenging clients. <laughs> and one, one client, I have to tell the story, one client that I had when I was in misdemeanor <coughs> court, um, he was charged with vandalism and disturbing the peace. Back in the day, the district attorneys, if you clap too loud, you got to disturb the peace. The mobile was there. <laughs> <laughs> When I met him, I knew, I just knew he was incompetent. I, I just knew it. I just knew he didn't, he was mentally ill and he was incompetent. So what I did was I told the, the court, I, he, 1368, and 13, for, for those of you who don't know 1368, that is when an attorney believes that their client is so mentally ill that they cannot understand the nature of the charges against them, they cannot assist you in their defense, and they don't, and the criminal case should be suspended pending an evaluation from a psychiatrist or a doctor. So I 1368ed this client, but and I told him, okay, nothing's gonna happen. We're just gonna wait until you get your evaluation. But that wasn't good enough. He kept calling and called me. He would call me literally every day. He called me every day. And I would tell him, client, there's nothing happening. We're just gonna have to wait and see. This one particular day, we were a public defender, this was when we were housed at the Human Services Agency. So we were over at the Human Services Agency and the receptionist called me and she said, Mr. Client is down here, but today he is very agitated. And frankly, I'm a little scared. He keeps, he keeps telling me that he's not gonna leave until you come down and you talk to him. He's really aggressive. And I said, oh, he's aggressive, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I went downstairs and I, and I went downstairs and I saw him, and the first thing that struck me was the way his appearance. He had on this tan, these tan, ill-fitting pants and a vest and an orange dress shirt, and he had a boom box on his shoulder, and he was on a bike, and he was sweaty, he was so sweaty. And I said, listen, man, you can't keep coming here and, and threatening my receptionist, and you can't keep coming here harassing me. I told you that if something changes, I'll let you know. You gotta go. So he left and I looked at the reception and I was like, I told him. <laughs> <laughs> so then that night I found out him and his brother murdered a prominent Stockton store clerk that night. And I felt terrible. I said, I did it. It was my fault. I made him do it. Like I felt if I hadn't talked to him like that, he wouldn't have done that. And I felt terrible. And so Fast forward, I was called to testify in, I think, his 1368 proceeding. And I walked in, and the courtroom was packed, like it is now. The courtroom was packed. And the jury was there, and I walked in, and the first question was, can you state your name for the record? And I went blank. <laughs> I mean, I knew it before I came in here. <laughs> it's like my brain left my head. <laughs> I'm just sitting there, and the and the attorney said da Danielle. I said, Oh, Danielle Ramirez. <laughs> I, I can't, you know. Then I got it. 
But my point is, is that I, I empathize in that game, that yeah. you, I empathize with people that, that have to testify. I understand how nerve wracking mm -hmm. that it is and, and I identify with that. Um, I'm not going to say that that's the reason why I left the public defender's office. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly thereafter, I was no longer at the <laughs> I left the public defender's office to go work for the county council's office. And um, thank you, Janine Mogard. Mm -hmm. Janine is here today. Thank you, Janine. Janine and I. Janine was instrumental in me getting hired at the public defender's office. We became very good friends over the years. She was there for me, um, and and I thank her. I, I'm forever grateful for her. Um, my many years as an attorney representing CPS were some of the best and also challenging. I worked with a lot of social workers, a lot of them here today, social workers. I've said this before. They're high. They're very fuzzy thinkers. They don't think like legal and lawyers, they're fuzzy thinkers. They want to they tell you about when the cat died and when, they want to tell you all this and I just want to know, tell me what happened. But I learned to think from a strength-based analysis and how to think differently. And I thank all of the, the, the staff and the social workers at HSA for help shaping me. And I know that those, those, um, those concepts will translate to the bench. Um, that leads me to the judicial process. All I'm going to say about that is that it was a stressful, emotional roller coaster. That's all I'm going to say. It was, you're up, down, up, down. You're excited when you get a call. You think something's going to happen. Nothing happened. Then you get a call from the judicial nominee, the, the state bar, and you're happy again. And they tell you, if you hear from us, it's bad news. If you don't hear from us, eh, probably good news. So then you don't hear anything. And then you wait, and you wait again, and you wait some more, and you wait again, and then you get discouraged, and then you want to give up, and then you get the call. You get the call from the governor's office, and then you're exhilarated because you get the call from the governor's office, and then you do the interview, and then I felt terrible after the interview. I thought I bombed it. Um, and then nothing happens, and you wait again, and then you get the call from the governor's office that you've been appointed and you're exhilarated. Yes. And then that's the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank all my close circle of friends who are here. They, you know who you are, who listen to me complain and cry and whine. Did I whine? Was I whining? Yeah. I whining. Yeah. Okay. And I whine and I whine all the while believing in me and encouraging me yeah. and lifting me up and telling me that I could do it, and you all knew that I was going to be a judge. To my partner, Eric, poor Eric, everyone's like, <laughs> <laughs> Eric, thank you for loving me unconditionally. Yeah. Um, you've seen me at my best, you've seen me at my worst, and you're still here. <laughs> you always knew that I would become a judge. Your support and love during this entire process means so much to me, and I'm forever grateful. Thank yes, you. And last but not least, To my youngest son, Andrew. Yeah, Drew. On May 31st, 2005, mm. I lost my oldest son, yes, Michael sir. David Ramirez, tragically. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if I wanted to or know if I could go on. Yeah. But I knew that I had to when I looked at Andrew. Mm -hmm. yes. I looked at Andrew and I said, I have to go on. And I wanted to show Andrew that no matter what life throws at you, you have to persevere. And I wanted to show Andrew that no matter what life throws at you, and no matter what your circumstances, you can be whoever, yeah. whatever you want to be. Andrew is so thoughtful and he's so loving. And I thank him for being the best son that I could ever have. Yeah. Yes. Can I talk enough? Yes. I'm done. I look forward to continuing to serve the San Joaquin County community as a Superior Court judge. Thank you all for coming. Well, that's why I came to work today, to see that. <laughs> Adjourned at this point. Um, I think there's a reception. There's a reception at the Bob Hope Theater. You guys better come. <laughs> Please come. Please come.
it's all that can come, please come uh, across the street to Baja. Thank you.